I am massively excited because today is collection day for my Supra. I am here at Werribee Toyota. They have been fantastic to deal with and under that red cover over there is my brand new car. So I have bought a Supra GTS and uh, I've been patiently waiting for it to get here. But today I'm going to walk you through, yes, delivering the car and taking off and first impressions and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I'm also going to walk you through the delivery process, the pre-delivery process as well, because that is unique to the Supra and especially for a Toyota dealer that hasn't delivered effectively a BMW product before, there's certain steps they need to take, plus a mode that limits transport to just 5Ks an hour. So without further ado, let's go check out my new car. Sensational. Beautiful. That looks so good. Love it. Fantastic. Okay, Nick, so tell us what happens when this car comes off the truck. What's involved in the pre-delivery process? Yeah, sure. So when it's on the truck, because of the height of the car, it's quite low to the ground. So it's actually got spaces in the, in the springs, in the coils. So at, when, when the car comes off, we, we make sure we check around the car to make sure there's no scratches, no marks, everything like that. Once that's all good, we take the spaces out. After that, we then have to send off the VIN number to Germany, who send back a code. Now this code is basically for the initial uh, what, diagnostics of the vehicle, so we can start accessing things like tire pressures and also the GPS. Um, a little fact about it, fun fact, is that when you actually get the code, it takes oh, 24 to probably 72 hours to get, sometimes even a bit longer. Um, and then we actually have to drive the car around to the satellites Pick up, um, pick up the GPS system in it. Same and, thing. Uh, is that like 200 k's an hour? Oh, yeah, of course, no, no. <laughs> nothing like that. Especially, oh, only your car, yeah. <laughs> no, nothing like that at all. Uh, same with the tire pressures as well. And uh, now, tell me, transport mode as well. Yes. What speed is the car limited to? Yeah, good point. Okay, so until we get that code back from Germany, it's actually in transport mode, so we can't actually fill the car up or do anything. It's at five kilometres an hour, approximately five k's. So is that to stop people on the wharf going and doing the toughies in the oh, Supra? I, it could be right. It's actually funny because it's only for this car. It's not for any Corollas or Camrys, so it must be something German specific. Excellent. Okay, thank you, Nick. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I think it's time for me to hop in the car. Congratulations. And get out of here. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, before we set off in Supra, I just wanted to give you a quick look around the car. So let's start at the front here where. I've gone a little different there with the number plate. Uh, well, number one, the number plate, a uh, little bit funny, but I <laughs> thought I'd be cheeky with it and pay homage to where it's actually from with its BMW components. Um, but you'll see that the number plate's off to the side as opposed to being mounted in the center there. When they do mount it in the center, they drill into the front of the car, whereas this here is set up through the tow hook. And I'll leave a link in the description to where you can buy that if you want one for your Supra. I really like things like these LED headlights. They're standard across the range. Give the car a bit of presence on the road. Makes it look quite cool. Okay, so I have bought the GTS, which is the top spec. This one here is in Nürburgray, which is a matte paint finish. Uh, I really like the color just because it's, it's a little bit different. It's gonna be a little rarer and it's just a really interesting sort of color um, for the car. Not sure how to care for it yet. So if you've got any tips, please let me know. Uh, GTS also has the forged 19-inch alloy wheels. So they're there on the front there. Um, both cars get the same brake size at the front, except with the GTS you get red brakes, uh, red calipers rather, and then a slightly bigger brake at the rear. So under the bonnet is a three litre turbocharged six. It's the B58 engine from BMW's range. 250 kilowatts of power, 500 newton meters of torque, I'm going to be putting it on a dyno though to get a better idea of exactly how much it makes at the rear wheels. I suspect it is a lot more than, than what it may seem. Rear of the car, big fan of that. I reckon they've done, done a good job with just giving that some aggressive styling. Australia's Supras get the sports exhaust that the US spec cars get. So it's slightly louder, get a bit more of a crackle and pop on the overrun. I also like this down here. This is the reversing light. So when you put it into reverse, this all lights up. You can see that uh, Japanese number plate only just fits in there. Super badge, GR badge, and then another Toyota badge for good measure. I'll show you inside the cabin. You've probably already seen this, but this is again very much a BMW interior. So you're getting that iDrive display up the top there, 8.8 .8 inch. Super clear, easy to use. I drive six from memory. This comes with a touchscreen. 
and then you get the rest of your components down here including the single sport button so it all just goes into sport mode by pressing that once you don't need to faff about with anything my car's also got the optional Alcantara seats so you can see that seat set up there looks quite nice Alrighty, I think it is time to hit the road. I'm super excited to take this for a spin and start putting some Ks on it, so let's go. Before I set off, I forgot to mention before that if you want to see how you actually order this car in Australia, it was through a lottery process. I did a video about that. And also the book that you get when you buy the car, uh, just use the links above to check those videos out. Okay, we have just driven out of the dealership, or well, we're just driving out of it now. Um, so what I've done, I've reset everything. So all the fuel economy gauges, I've reset uh, trip meters. I wanna get a proper feel for what this car's like in the long run, how much fuel it's gonna use, and exactly what it's like to live with. Uh, right now, I'm gonna go for a bit of a drive just to get the initial kilometers on the clock. So I'm gonna come back to you shortly with how it all feels and more about the run-in procedure for the Supra. So we are getting along here, and I just wanted to fill you in on uh, the run-in procedure according to the manual. So what it says is for the first 2,000 kilometres, you don't want to be exceeding 4,500 RPM. And for the first two to 300 kilometres, you want to allow the brakes to bed in. And they've also recommended for the first 200 kilometres that the tyres won't have optimal traction whatever that means. Uh, so the car was delivered with 30 kilometers on the clock and as Nick kind of alluded to, they, they have to do a number of things to get the car ready. So it's out of transport mode. They need to get it set up so that it's working for the, for the satellites, for the navigation. There's also a process involved there for the navigation to authenticate so that you can use that system uh, because inherently this is all BMW stuff. So when they send off the VIN number to get approval for those codes, it all goes to Germany as opposed to somewhere in Japan. So first impressions, what am I thinking? Um, I love it, it feels very different to be in a brand new car. Yes, we get to drive a lot of new cars doing the job that I do, but often the new cars have 1,000, 1,500 Ks on them. Other people have used them. This is very much brand new. It's, it's all fresh out of the box, so it feels really nice. Um, let's talk about tire noise. So there is a little bit of tire noise here I'm noticing at uh, sort of 80 Ks an hour. You are starting to hear a lot of that. I did notice that in the um, in the first batch of cars that we drove. Obviously with sport mode, which is just that button there, this activates the sport setting on the adaptive dampers. I still find the ride really comfortable. When you consider that this is a sports car at heart, the ride itself is actually really good when you think that other cars in this segment are quite firm to begin with. Some motoring journalists have said that this is too firm. Well, I completely disagree with that. So on the front of the car there, I have the, the number plate holder that's offset. So that number plate holder being offset allows uh, air to still flow through the car. The tow hook eye is effectively holding that number plate in position and then it's got a backing plate on it. You can easily remove it. It comes with a little wrench that you uh, just one twist to it then pulls the number plate off. So if you're going to a track day or something like that, we're gonna be going much faster. It will be beneficial to have the number plate off because you won't get it flapping around or have any of uh, the issues there with, with wind resistance. What I really love about this car, and I'm gonna do a bit more of a detailed review later on, but I love the infotainment system. Uh, a lot of people have criticized this for being too much of a BMW. Well, I, I reckon they've taken the best parts of a BMW. So they've got the engine, the B58. It is a ripper of an engine, three liter, turbocharged, 250 kilowatts, but I reckon it makes much more power than that. So I'll be sticking it on a dyno to find out. It's 250 kilowatts at the flywheel. I love the gearbox. Uh, I don't like dual clutch gearboxes, especially at low speed, they can be quite clunky. Yes, they are good in things like Porsches and, and, and those kinds of cars, but they're much more expensive. You're gonna be paying a premium for that kind of thing. So this feels like the right mix for this car. I think that in the future, they will have opportunity to bring out more powerful versions. So that's a version there with uh, the, uh, the engine out of the competition cars, so M3 Comp, M2 Comp. I think that would suit this car absolutely beautifully and it would really get along nicely. So that is my first initial impressions. I'm gonna go for a bit of a blat. Um, of course, not exceeding that 4,500 uh, kilometer, sorry, 4,500 RPM rule for the run-in, but I'm gonna go for a bit of a drive, get some Ks on it. And I look forward to giving you guys more updates on owning the Toyota Supra 
uh, in GTS spec and exactly what it's like to care for, especially that paint. I'm going to get some professional help on that. And if you know anyone that can help out with that, let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll have plenty more updates coming. And when I finally hear from Tesla about my Model 3, and I've heard nothing yet, it's absolutely crazy. Their customer service is terrible. Toyota has been fantastic. Um, I will keep you updated on everything. Please don't forget to subscribe and like, and I'll catch you guys next time.